after excavation and before you compact the soil subgrade. You need to know how much it can be compacted. Compaction should reach the highest density possible so the soil won't deform under loads. Three factors govern how much the soil subgrave can be compacted. The soil type or classification, the moisture content of the soil, the type of compaction equipment, and the amount of compaction from it. We've already discussed soil types. Soils have different levels of moisture at which each will achieve the highest density. The moisture content in each kind of soil is critical to achieving the highest density through compaction. Moisture content is important because water acts as a lubricant during compaction, allowing soil particles to move more easily. If there's too little moisture, the particles won't compact because they can't slide well enough. Too much water takes up space between the particles and keeps them from moving closer together. While on the job, how do you know the subgrade soil has the right amount of moisture before compacting? Now here's a simple test. First take a handful from the open excavation and squeeze it into the size of a tennis ball. Then drop the ball from about one foot above the ground onto a hard surface. If the ball breaks into a smaller number of fairly uniform fragments, the soil is close to the optimum moisture content for compaction. If the soil won't even form into a ball, the soil is too dry and water must be added before it's compacted. And if the ball doesn't break apart or it breaks into just a few pieces, it's too moist. The subgrade should be allowed to dry before it's compacted. Soils with a lot of gravel in it and soils that are mostly sandy behave a little differently. They won't even form a ball into your hand. And sandy soils with a lot of water could be too moist but still break apart in this test. Sandy soils require moisture during compaction but usually less than required for clay or silty soils. So you see it's important to know the soil type and the moisture content. Now these field tests are okay for patios, driveways, and walkways where the native soil was not disturbed by excavation. But when driveways and streets are being built and fill soil is being used to achieve certain grades, you'll need the help of a professional soil testing laboratory to test the soil.